This is how we make the moonshine. Well, we've got the liquor. I've got the tires here. About right, ain't it? Yeah. I'm excited to see how we can make some pear moonshine. Oh, we can do it. Last time, Mandy Shearer, she brought a pressurized rig, you know, and all that. So I'm dying to see this infusion thing that you've made, huh? This time, we're going to try to scale up a little bit on her volume and see if we can fuse a little more electric quicker than the way we was doing it before. Huck thinks we've come up with something, so we'll see how it turns out. You was using CO2, right? NO2. But CO2 would work just as well, because well, they use right. that for sodas and, yeah. and beers and things. That'll work right there, won't it? Yeah. The NO2 can just give it like a sweeter flavor where the CO2 would kind of be used to flavor like saltier things. How did you come up with this? This right here come from a steel supply company and I found this at a junkyard. Somebody just throwed off to the side there. I was looking for a part. You're kidding. Yeah. Like a bomb to me. Yeah, it does, <laughs> don't it? Does it say on there how much uh, PSI this can hold? 130. Okay. That's enough, ain't it? Yeah, that's that's a lot of pressure. I don't know nothing about that. I'll cut the pyres at. How about that? Sounds good. <laughs> this apparatus I'm trying to put together right here, uh, it'll be 20 times faster than the way we was doing it before. Amanda had these little whipped cream chargers, you know, with the little CO2 cartridges you screw in, and couldn't do but maybe a couple quarts at a time. Then the filter system she had was I mean, it worked good. It, it cleaned the liquor up, but it was a long, drawn-out process. Well, this will be the inlet line for the, the gas. Go into here and pressurize this chamber, and then you're just going to attach some kind of like a like a PSI gauge on this side? Yeah. All right. I believe that's tight enough. Initially, I see this chamber that he has, and I can't believe somebody would throw this away. It seems like it's all functional. That's perfect. Yeah, yep. It goes right above where we need it. A good ratio for this size vessel is three gallons of alcohol, one gallon of flavor, and then just about a gallon's worth of room for space so that we can add the gas into the chamber. You let me know and you start laying the pressure to her, I'm gonna get away back. <laughs> so the only concerns that I have is that he did find it from a scrapyard, and we are about to put like about 100 pounds of PSI in this tank right now. So I think we're all a little bit nervous at this point. I'm gonna get back. Okay. <laughs> now you're making me nervous. Shoot. All right, here we go. Fingers crossed, let's see. Oh, it's working. Yeah, it's up to 50 PSI right now, 60. You can cut it, I mean, we're just, you know, testing it out. So it definitely holds the pressure. This is the fun part though, yeah. right? It works. Didn't blow Mark up. <laughs> That's what they call hillbilly engineering right there. Yeah, but with fruit, I think this will work great. Once we release all the pressure and the carbonation, we should just be left with the moonshine plus all the pear flavor. Now that we have everything hooked up, everything works pretty flawlessly on our dry run. So I think it's gonna be a really smooth, really good tasting pear corn whiskey at the end. That peeling on them pears right there will lower your cholesterol. Really? Sure will. Yeah, once we get all these pears cut up, we'll boil them 20, 30 minutes, get them softened up real good, and get all the sugar out of them we can. But it ought to make a good flavor. So I've been meaning to ask you guys, you guys are cousins, right? First cousins. And you learned how to moonshine from you know, your my fathers? Uncle. My uncles. Your yeah. uncle? uncles, on them, uncles on the dad's side. So you guys just grew up around it. That's all you've ever seen as well, kids. born it still, yeah. really. It's really great to be here to work with guys like Mark and Huck because they have learned from generations of people who've been practicing moonshining and distilling in the backwoods. That'll burn your eyes, boy. Smells stout. I feel like it's really important to learn this craft and preserve it because it's been a part of our history since the beginning of our country. That's a pretty neat setup, ain't it? I think it's awesome. It's exactly like the small one. And we have a gauge, so we know we're being safe with the gauge. <laughs> You're not gonna watch the gauge? I'm gonna let you do that. Here we go. Right. You tell me when you think we need to stop. Okay. It might go up faster this time because we have a lot of yeah. stuff in there. Here we go. I don't think it's gonna shoot off or anything, but just let's not stand in front of that because it'll go in that direction. Worst case scenario. <laughs> it's a blow off valve. Right. I wouldn't shake it, huh? You got to. While it's sitting here, there's all those bubbles in there, and it's just forcing the liquor into those pears. 
And once we release it again, it'll pull the flavor out of the pears into the liquor in that little device there. I told you you're a scientist. Want me to release the pressure? Yes, ma'am. All right. <laughs> Let's see what we've made here. Once we take the alcohol out of the chamber, we strain the pears to get all the liquor out. Oh, it smells like pears. Mm -hmm. We've made it a little cloudy, so instead of trying to run this back through a filtration system, we're gonna use the still as our filter this time. And we'll redistill it, clean it up, and we're gonna get a cleaner, smoother product in the end. Eat you one Yeah, taste that. <laughs> Tastes good, boy. Hot, though, eh? That infusion really worked. It's just about biting into one of Laura's pears, you know. It's uh, that's how good a flavor it is. It's like a pear corn brandy. But we need to try to clear it up. If we can keep this same flavor, we really have some. We probably got, what, four or five more gallons of this Something to infuse like now? All right. After infusing this corn with the pears, it tastes awesome. Here we go. You tell me when to stop. I feel like we could take this and sell this to anybody and they would love it. But because we have the time now, we can take this back to the still and redistill it and bring this pear corn whiskey to a whole nother level. The guys just told me that it's gonna be my job to run it all by myself this time. So I'm pretty honored because I want them to trust me and respect me and know that I'm also a moonshiner and I can also pull my weight here. Gosh. We run this uh, at a tail to tail right there. All right. There's a ton of pressure, and it's gonna be my chance to show them what I can do. Oh man, here's your little starting flake right. here. Just be real careful, I'll tell you. Don't spit it. Yes, sir. Step number one, be careful. So cooking on an open fire through furnace heat, not a lot of people do that anymore. And if I just get that flame a little bit too hot, we could scorch the liquor possibly, and and then the whole run would be shot because of that. So I gotta really make sure that I pay attention and watch those coals. How's it coming over there? About ready. Pretty close. Yeah, steam's up in this arm here. Oh, she's running, guys. How's it smell? It smells like pears. I feel like I'm getting pretty nervous at this moment because I really want Mark and Huck to approve of all the work that we've done. So now's the moment of truth. I can't believe it. What do you think? I just like biting into a pirate. That's some good stuff right there. That's good. Yeah? Yeah, boy. Good pirate taste, clear as a bell. Happy. Y'all want to get me a good drink of this. Clear as a bell, ain't it? Yeah. I'm really happy with the final product. It tastes just like Laura's pears, so we didn't overwhelm the base spirit, and we were really able to infuse it with a ton of flavor. Get more all the way down through the esophagus. Mm -hmm. Is that what you call it? Esophagus. 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 My fingers start to tingle a little. Yeah, what down through my esophagus, the end of my belly, and I, that's sort of what he did. Cut a little jig or nice little or something. You know, I know it's a good shine bit. What I thought we would do. It's something like this right here. Then fill it up with that infused liquor. And that's on a shelf at a bar. People will pick that out of 100 bottles and say they want to try it because it looks pretty. Yeah. yeah. You put this pyre down that jar of liquor and set it up on the shelf for a week or two, that pyre right there will be pretty potent. Yeah, we're going to split this up three ways. Oh, yeah? Mm-hmm. I get to take a little bit of this home? Yes, ma'am. That's awesome. I guess we better wrap this up and get out of here, haven't we? Amanda, you know, we kind of learned her how to do the liquor in the old-timey way, and she taught us something on this infusion, you know, a quicker way to do it. I think she's happy with what we taught her, and we're happy with what she taught us. <laughs>